فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم one of the this qaidah application is the application of this qaidah is that to show that the religion is based upon is is that the wajib the things that are obligatory that we have to come with is connected to ability and the wajib that the wajib is connected to your ability as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made in the religion for us and that's why the author says وَلَيْسَ وَاجِبٌ بِلَقْتِدَارِ This is the Shaykh is trying to show you the application of this qa'ida that the religion is is. That there is no such a thing as something called wajib when there's no ability. وَلَيْسَ وَاجِبٌ It's not wajib on you anymore. بِلَقْتِدَارِ If you don't have the ability. So the wajib is connected to your ability. And then the author gives you another example of the ease of this religion. وَلَا مُحَرَّمٌ مَعَ الضِّرَارِ And there is no haram when there's a necessity for it. When there is a... When there's a necessity for it. What is a necessity? And this is what the scholars, they call الضرورات تبيح المحظورات That the necessity permits for you that which is haram. You're no longer going to sin if you do this haram. Because it was out of necessity. But, ne but the definition of necessity is misunderstood. Darura is ma yalhaqul abda dararun bi tarkihi. It is anything if you leave it, harm will afflict you. Wala yaqumu ghayruhu maqamahu. And there's nothing else that can stand in its place. Basically, it stands on two pillars. The first one is wujudu darar bi tarkiha. If you leave it, it's going to cause you harm. Second is عدم قيام غيرها مقامها. There's nothing else to stand in its place. You have no other alternative. Then the author, rahimahullah, speaks about a very powerful issue, which is even that though the, the necessity, because of the necessity, you're now allowed to do something haram. It's not unrestricted amount of haram which you can do. The Shaykh says, Every impermissible thing you're doing, which has been permitted for you due to necessity, is connected to what? It's all in accordance to the necessity. It's all in accordance to the necessity. So the abd, the slave, it is not permissible for him or her to go overboard in the need. And you're not allowed to do more than that which is needed. So if you do take more than the necessity, it becomes haram. What becomes haram is the ziyada, the additional amount that you're adding to it becomes haram. So for example, a person believes that he's going to die if he doesn't eat this, if he doesn't eat food. And so he eats a food that's haram. He's only allowed to eat an amount that will allow him to live. If he then takes some in his backpack and he comes to a city and he still carries on eating it and he keeps eating the haram, after he's become full, this is haram. It's in accordance to the necessity. Naam. The author, Rahimahullah, he talks about a qa'idah known as al-yaqeen la yazulu bil-shak, which is basically 
Certainty cannot be removed with doubt and it cannot be repelled with doubt. Doubt is something that falls onto a person, it's something that comes to you. And it comes to a certainty that was already in place. A certainty that was in place. A doubt that occurs to that certainty, falls onto that certainty, it cannot remove it. You're going to stick and hold on to your certainty. And you're not allowed to adhere and listen to what? You're not allowed to adhere to, to that doubt that has come to you. And according to the jurists, the fuqaha, this is only specific to, this qa'id is only specific to things, ahkam which are, ahkam al-shari'iyah which is talabi. And it is not connected to ahkam al-shari'iyah al-khabariyah. So if it goes back to matters which are pertaining to aqeedah and stuff like that, like believing and disbelieving, then this qa'idah can't be used. If a person says, I have doubt about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a problem. This qa'idah is not used anymore. This qa'idah is only specific to what? If a person says, I doubt the Qur'an's preservation, shak has come to me regarding it. The scholars they say, Inna shakka yu'athiru fil yaqeen. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, except those who what? Inna mal mu'minun al-ladheena. What did he say? Al-ladheena lam yartabu. In Surah Al-Hujurat, the last page. And those who don't have, lam yartabu, they didn't have doubts with them. Certainty. But in the scholars, at the ending of, the, of books of fiqh, they've placed Kitab al the book of apostasy, and Kitab al Hudud. And if you look at the definition that they put towards a murtad, what did they say? Huwa al Muslim al ladin taqad adinu bi qawlin aw fi'lin aw i'tiqadin aw shakkin. It's a person whose religion it becomes, it goes because of a speech or an action or a belief or even a doubt. So they made the doubt of certainty. In Ahkam al al Khabariyah to be apostasy. And it is books of Aqeedah and Tawheed. If you have doubts, it affects your belief now. So if a person has doubt in, for example, the belief of the angels, or other than that, this doubt will remove your certainty. If, rather, if it's connected to Ahkam al Tahara and whatnot, Masail al Fiqhiyah. The shak that comes here and the doubt that occurs here right now, it doesn't affect it. فتنبه يا إخوة be point, be alert of this point. This is a very important point. What comes under this qa'idah, which is al-yaqeen, certainty cannot be removed with doubt. So what is better when this qa'idah is spoken about is to say the following: al-yaqeen لا يزول بالشك في باب الطلبيات that you add to it في باب الطلبيات. Because many people just say, Al Yaqinu la yazulu bi shak, and they leave it like that. And so somebody's going to come and think it's what? In Babul Khabariyat as well. So the author, Rahimahullah, now this qa'idah, which is Al Yaqinu la yazulu bi shak, fi Babul Talabiyat, he brings so much under it. And he brings what's known as Al Aslu. Everything has an Asr, which is the certainty. So he's bringing examples for it. And the asr here, brothers, what is it meant? Al-Qa'idah al-Mustamirra. The consistent and the continuous principle. Al-Lati la tutraku illa li dalilin yanqulu anha. And it will be not left unless a person comes with the evidence that removes it. And the author mentions nine of those. Nine. Nine asr that we stick with, which is Qa'idah al-Mustamirra. The first one is and the asl fi miyahin al-tahara that the water the asl for it is what purity and the fact that the author says miyahin our water don't understand from it that this is damir 
It's not intended to specify a general. It doesn't mean that it's only the water of the Muslims. That's in the Muslim land or it's the water that's specific to... No, it means water that is on this earth. The water of ours in this earth, he means. The second, he mentions the second chapter is Al-Aslu fil ard tahara The original essence of the water on this earth is what? Sorry, the, the, the asal of this earth is that it's pure. This earth is pure, the earth is pure. The third one is Al-Aslu fi thiyab tahara the asal of the clothing is that it's pure. Number four, al asal fil hijar al tahara, that the asal of the stones and the rocks is that it's pure. And the fifth, which he mentions, is al asal fil abdaa al tahrim, that the asal of abdaa is used for two things. One is aqd al nikah, marriage. And when it's a marriage, you don't say abda, you say ibda. You place a kasra on the on the hamza. You say ibda. If it's ibda, then it's aqdun nikah. It's a marriage. That's not what the author is talking about here. Are you with me, brothers? Because the asal is, I can marry any woman I want, unless the shari- unless the woman that the sharia tells me I can't marry. I can't ma- marry my mom because the sharia said I can't marry my mom. I can't marry my sister because the Sharia told me I can't marry her. The asal of marriage is what? Is the aqdu nikah, the contract of marriage, is that it's permissible until the Sharia proves that the marriage of this person is not permissible. But what here he means is abda' bifathil hamza, which means al furuj, private parts. That the asal is that women's private parts are haram from you unless that which the Sharia permitted for you. So a man can't just go and commit zina with a woman and say it's permissible, you prove to me how haram this is to me. The answer is that it's not allowed. So for example, what's the asal? If we catch a man with a woman, the asal is you're not, why are you sleep? why are you with this woman for? He has to go and prove that he's married to her. The asal is that it was haram from her. Are you with me brothers? Are you with me brothers? He, we see a brother hold, we know, we know this, we see a brother, he's holding a woman's hand. The asal is that he's not allowed to hold this woman's hand. He has to now prove that he's married to this woman. If a hakim grabs him, the Lord leader of the country and says, stop, what are you doing? Stand here, you women stand here. Why are you holding her hand for? And he says, I'm married to her, prove it. Because the furuj is haram. He has to go now prove that he's married to this sister, woman. Are you with me? So that's the difference between the two. And this is Faslul Munaza'ah. There's a discussion between the scholars. What's the asal of marriage? Is it tahrim or is it tahlil? Is it khilaf? Are you with me, brothers? The sixth chapter that the author speaks about is Aslu fil Luhum, meat. The asal of that? Of Luhum, meat is what? Is that it's haram. What he means by this is Al-Luhum ma la yahillu illa bi dhakatin. It is anything that is not halal except with a slaughtering. That's what he means. Then the asal for this is haram unless it's slaughtered. Because Allah says in the Quran, Hurrimat alaykum al mayta. Every animal that is dead, its asal is for it is what? Every meat that you see that the animal is dead for it, it's haram until you can say, look, we're allowed to eat it. The sharia permitted for us to eat this meat, even though it died. Like the animals that are in the sea. If they're dead, we can eat them. The author doesn't mean that it's any meat that we come across, an animal that's walking, he doesn't mean by this that it's haram. Because the asal for that is, the al here is not istighraqiya that the author here is using. He's referring to the animals that are only permitted, uh, 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 the asal is that the animals permitted to slaughter. 
And the asal is that it's haram if it's not slaughtered. Are you with me, brothers? So if me and you are walking and we see a dead animal, and you say to me, brother, we're not allowed to eat this meat. I say to you, this is from the animals we're allowed to eat, even though it hasn't been slaughtered. I have to bring evidence for that. But he doesn't mean the luhum, istighraq, all the types of animals, because that's asal, is halal. As Allah said in the Quran, قُلْ لَا أَجِدُ فِي مَا أُحْيَ إِلَيَّ مُحَرَّمًا عَلَىٰ طَاعِمٍ يَطْعَمُ إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ مَيْتَةً أَوْ دَمَ مَسْفُوحًا The ninth chapter that the author mentions is الْأَصْلُ فِي دَمِ الْمَعْصُومِ That the original essence of people, the blood is that it's haram for you to spill a blood. You're not allowed to. Ma'asum is what? مَنْ تَبَتَتْ لَهُ حُرْمَةٌ شَرْعِيَّةٌ يَمْتَنِعُ بِهَا That the Sharia has given this person a right for them not to be touched. You're not allowed to kill a kafir which you've given a covenant and an oath to. You're not allowed to kill a Muslim. You're not allowed to kill a disbeliever in which you have brought them into a Muslim land. You can't trick them. You can't just go into embass embassies and just bomb embassies and stuff. These people are brought here with a man, safety. Then the eighth is al asru fil adat. The asal of the adat is what? Alibaha. The customs and the norms of the people, the asal is that it's permissible. Adat. Adat is ismul lima staqarra alayhi nas wa tatabau. Adat means it's a term used lima staqarra alayhi nas, that which the people have become solidified upon and they've been doing for time to time and they've been passing it over to each other. The asal is that it's permissible for them to do this. You have now to prove that this is haram for them to do. Are you with me, brothers? The people have a norms of doing something. It's their norms, it's their ad that they do this. You can't come and say, look, you're not allowed to do this, it's haram. You're going to have to bring evidence for that ad that to be wrong. This norms to be wrong. You have to say, what's the evidence? Because the asal is that the ad that is mubah and it's permissible unless there comes and that's what the Qa'ida, the scholars say, Al-Aslu fil urfi al -ibaha. And the word urf is better to use than the word aada. The reason is because, for two reasons. Number one, khitab al-shari'i ja'a bismi al-urf. Wa lam yati bismi al-aada. That the shari'a used the word urf, it didn't use the word aada. Allah says, khudhi al-afwa wa amur bil urfi. The second is, the Ada it encompasses evil things and bad things. Whereas Urf only is things that are good. That's why the word Ma'roof comes from good. Then the author Rahimullah mentions Hataya Ji Asari Ful Ibaha. That the Urf is Mubah. So no one can take you out of the ibaha of the urf unless he comes with a sarif. Sarif means something that turns it from the ibaha and that makes it haram. He has to bring that sarif for you. The ninth chapter that the author speaks about which is al-asl fil ibadat. The asl in ibadat which is when he says وَلَيْسَ مَشْرُوعًا مِنَ الْأُمُورِ غَيْرُ الَّذِي فِي شَرْعِنَا مذكور. Which is the issue of ibadat. The asl is at Tawqif To hold back You're not allowed to do it unless you have any evidence for it So in other words, the asal for ibadat It is that it's not permissible to do it unless there's an evidence for it And the author, rahimahullah, in his own kitab Which he has is called Al-Qawa'id wal-Usul al-Jami'ah Wal-Taqasim al-Badi'ati al-Nafi'ah He uses another term which is He says al-Aslu fil ibadat al-Hadr So they use two terms. Here he mentioned one term and the other time in the other, his other book he used another term, the author. Here he said it is what? At-tawakkuf, at tawqif to stand. Just stop, don't move. And the other place he used hadar, haram. And the difference between the two is 
The first one is بِاعْتِبَارُ وُرُودِ الْعِبَادَةِ فِي خِطَابِ الشَّرَعِ The first one is بِاعْتِبَارِ وُرُودِ الْعِبَادَةِ فِي خِطَابِ الشَّرَعِ is in terms of the transmission of the ibadah from that angle no ibadah can be done unless the addressing comes from the sharia unless it addresses us with it we're not allowed to do it but the other angle he's looking at it what? in terms of its ruling he's looking at it in terms of what? in terms of its ruling now the author rahimahullah he mentions here two qaida two extra qawaid which is al wasail al ahkam al maqasid which is one that the means takes the ruling of the objective And the second one is الزوائد لها أحكام المقاصد And the zawaid is the things that are added on to the action. The things that a person does adding on to the action. It also takes the أحكام المقاصد So three things you have to know from this particular qa'idah that the author is teaching us. He's three teaching us in this qa'idah, three things you need to know. First of all, what is meant by maqasid? Maqasid is al-ghayat al-muradah fil amri wa nahi. It is the intention and the objectives of this command and this prohibition. What's the objective of this command? And what is the objective of this prohibition? The second thing you need to know is al-wasail, means. Wasail is الذرائع الموصلة إلى المقاصد It is the thing that makes you reach to the objective It's the bridge that connects you to the other side الزوائد is الأمور التي تجري تتميما للفعل تتميما للفعل It is anything that is to complete the action So the wasila, which is the means, it takes the ruling of what? The objectives. Whether it's a, if the objective is amr, the wasila becomes amr. If the objective is a prohibition, then the wasila becomes prohibited. If the objective is there's a reward connected to it, the means is also connected to it. If a punishment is connected to the maqasid, then the means is also connected to it. مثلا, salah is a maqasid, min maqasid is shari'ah. Salah is an objective that the shari'ah wants. And the means to the salah is what? Walking. So مثلا, salah jama'atan fil masjid ma'murun biha. Praying the salah in the masjid is commanded. When you can hear the adhan. So walking to the masjid now becomes what? Commanded. Because it's the means to do the action of going to the masjid. And the person becomes rewarded for this means. And he will be punished in a means that's impermissible if he does the same way. The zawaid is what? Like in? The zawaid is like leaving the masjid now. Coming to the masjid is the wasila. Zawaid is like al khuruj min al masjid. When the person now finishes the prayer leaving and going back to his house, this is zawaid now. He's also going to get rewarded for it. We say going home, you're going to get rewarded for it as well. This is nothing. He's already done the ibadah now. He's come with the ibadah. He's going to get rewarded for it. The zawaid that are prohibited are three types. The zawaid that are prohibited are three types. 
The first one is zawaid that completes off. Zawaid mutammimatun lil muharram min jinsihi. It is completing something haram of its essence. Then he takes its ruling then. The second one is a zawaid to get rid of a haram. 